And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a game called Obsession, Pride, Intrigue, and Prejudice in Victorian England. Yeah, Pride and Prejudice, right? Uh, although the name Obsession sounds like a new perfume. Obsession, get it now. But really what it is, is everyone here is obsessed with this courting and all this to-do and lords and ladies and have all these things and honestly a bunch of silliness. But hey, that's what was happening here at this point in time. So you have a family, you want to court one of the Fairchilds. They're rich, they're wealthy, and most importantly, they're highly reputable. You don't want the slackers hanging around your area. So you are building up your nice manner, trying to get the right guests, have your family do the best, get a nice cadre of servants. Let me show you a little bit about how to play it. Now, I realize I'm not going to go over every rule in this game. There's a lot of things going on, but the goal of the game is to get the most points. You're going to be doing that uh, by getting victory point for completing objectives, having a high reputation, having servants, having money, and courting the right people. You're going to do that over 16 rounds or 20 rounds if you want to play a longer game. You just flip this over. There's going to be a courtship where you're going to be trying to attract the attentions of either Charles Fairchild or Elizabeth Fairchild and a little theme card is going to be turned over showing that they like prestige and as the game goes by in different rounds you'll turn over more of these to see what they're going for they really like prestige here and service each player is going to start with their own family and you're going to start with some country estate improvements you start with private study butler's room main gazebo front parlor bowling green you also start with some servants and you will get some family members so everyone will get four family members Although, in this particular case, this family here, uh, they get a fifth family member. That's their special ability. Each family has some sort of spe special ability. Maybe they get more money. Maybe they get more reputation. You can see my reputation here is at one. And you also are going to get two starting guests. These are randomly drawn from a pile. So, you have all these different people, and we get ready to go. Now, on your turn, you can take an active turn or a passing turn. Uh, when you take an active turn, you're going to activate one of your country state improvements. So let's say I decide to activate the Bowling Green. So the Bowling Green here needs a reputation of one. I have a reputation of one, so I'm fine. It needs two Gentry. Gentry is just another name for pretty much all these people. And it requires me to put the footman servant there. So I'll place this here in activity. And I'll put this servant here to show that they're being used there. And now I need two gentry. So I can pick two people from my hand. So maybe I want to bring in John Ambrose here. So he's going to attend. And he needs someone to attend him, a green servant. And I'll pick uh, maybe this guy here. And he'll show up and he needs no servant to attend him. After I've done all that, these servants are going to be going to expended service, and each round you'll move stuff over. So essentially, for one turn, uh, your servants won't be active. And then you get the bonuses and benefits of the things you played. So the Bowling Green, for example, will give me 300 pounds. That's the, that's the bonus that I get from this one. Uh, this guy here is going to give me two reputation. So I'll move this around. When this passes five, this will flip to two reputation and go on. So your reputation will slowly build up. And this guy here gives me another 200 pounds. So that's pretty useful. This gave me 500 pounds and some reputation. And they'll give you all sorts of rewards. Sometimes they will allow you to take a guest from the top of one of these piles. Here you have regular guests and special guests. Guests come in all sorts of fashions. They're worth points, but sometimes guests are a pain in the neck. Like this lady here, she's worth minus two. And when you play her, you lose reputation. You get another guest to show up at your party. But fortunately, there are cards and different ways to get rid of guests out of your hand. But a lot of the guests are also quite useful, especially when you get to the prestige guests. And they'll require sometimes more servants. But this guy gives you another guest, 200 pounds every time you use him. And he also gives you worth two victory points at the end of the game. And look at this lady. She's six victory points. Let's you draw one of these little VP cards which can be used to get points or you can use a special action on it. And so she can be pretty handy. However, to get her, I need a reputation of six to be able to use her. She's going to require two different servants to run. So it's, it's a little bit of work to be able to pull these off.
Players will also be able to buy more things. So there's a builder's market down here, and the cost for the different tiles is simply the cost above the tile, plus or minus whatever it shows here. So these riding stables are 400 pounds minus 200 pounds, so they're 200 pounds. But that's another kind of sporting event. As you buy these tiles, and I already mentioned the Bowling Green, which I just played, you can see they're worth points. This one's worth minus three, but when you use one, you will flip it over. Hey, now it's worth two points. And also the action on the back might change. Once it, you see the rose part of it, you, when you use it in the future, it won't flip over. It only flips over the first time you use it. So it gives less money in the future, I guess, the next time you use the Bowling Green. However, it is now worth two victory points. While, for example, the fence paddock here, this lets you dismiss a guest. Oh, how useful, minus two. And after I use it, now I will draw three guests and take two of them, and it's worth two points. And it's not just two gentry, sometimes very specifically, for example, this one here, you need two ladies to play whist, and then here you need three ladies to play it. And of course, the more people you play, the more benefits you have. Now, when you play these folks, though, they're not going to come back in your hand. They're only going to come back in your hand when you take a passing action. A little flow chart card here. When you take a passing action, you'll get back all the cards that you've played. You'll refresh all your servants to be able to use them. And you'll take either 200 pounds or refresh the building market, which means clear the building market. And then you can shop in the building market. So that's what you're going to have to do because after a while, you're going to run out of cards to play or you'll have cards that you can play, but you don't have enough servants to play them on or whatever your reason is. So a passing action isn't as exciting as a regular action, but it is something you can do. Now, there's all sorts of buildings here. There are some special buildings that will show up. You can see these are just worth more points. This big game trophy room, you can tell these by the pictures that are on them. And there's a giant bag of tiles and all sorts of buildings. Any, anything from the hillside kennels here to the north dining room. Some of the buildings basically just give you here now your footmen can serve as valets, so they can get count as two different workers when you're using them. Each player has a butler room where you can send your butler to hire two servants from the servants for hire. It's possible to get an under butler. One of the tiles will give you that, which basically acts as a wild. Players will be starting with objective cards, have a chance to get more over the course of the game. These will give you victory points at the end if you get a very specific building, uh, or if you, you know, this one gives one point for every sporting tile. And there's other things that are going to happen. There's a lot going on. Like I said, I don't want to go over all the different details of the game. These courtships will show up, and whoever has the most points building-wise of the different types that are out here will be able to use to court one of the Fairchilds, who are worth eight victory points if you have them at the end of the game, but also give you really good special abilities. And you'll be able to use these until maybe someone else wins their affections away, and at the end of the game, like I said, they're worth eight victory points. So there's a lot going on in the game. You're trying to get your reputation up. Reputation can be worth a lot, although there is a maximum amount of reputation. And as I said, this board can be turned over and you can play a 20 round game. There's also various things that, like here you get an objective card, a village fair, if you have a certain building, you'll get things. A builder holiday, you can build more than one building on your turn on this one. So different events will happen as the game goes by. That's how you play. The game comes with a big rule book here, which isn't that complicated. It just explains how to play the game. It's pretty straightforward. Most of the rule book is, takes place on how to set up. And then comes with a glossary, which not only tells you how you get all the different victory points in the game and gives strategy, but talks about all the different things over the course of the game and gives very detailed instructions on these. Now, at first blush, I'm like, yay, this is a good way to do it. The problem is sometimes rules that I really need to know happen to be in this book and I'm not sure which thing to look up to find out that rule. So this is good, but not as good as I would have preferred. I did have some trouble. It wasn't the easiest game to learn from the rules. The components are fine. Uh, my biggest regret with the components are, for example, this big game trophy room has that nice picture on it, but these rooms don't. The butler's room, the front power, most of the rooms don't. And I know that they need the symbology on, which, by the way, symbology is very easy to tell apart. I had no problems with the symbols. But I just felt like it, it kind of detracts from the theme. It just doesn't look as nice to see a bunch of just things here. The artwork on the cards themselves, I like this artwork a lot. And usually the people who cause problems usually look like they're... I don't know if these are like real pictures of people or if they're like 
modern, I don't know, but they did a good job. These pictures come through, and I should mention that the cards, the meeples, the objective cards, everything of a good quality. I do not like these victory point card size, he he he, doll cards, but I, maybe they're just trying to save money, I'm not sure. These are really tiny, uh, they're, they're a little too small for me. Coins are fine, boards are fine. The whole thing has a little bit more blander look than I would like, but overall the component quality is pretty good. Now incidentally, when I first was going through this, I thought, wow, there is a ton and that glossary doesn't help matters. It's like, there's a lot going on. But the game is not that complex. You are literally, passing is a super easy turn, but if you're doing a regular turn, you're picking a room, picking the people to go in that room, playing the servants, taking the rewards, and you're done. The game plays a lot faster than you might think. It's not without its flaws though. There's a few things I'm not a big fan of in this game. Uh, first of all, I already mentioned some of this, like the size of the cards and stuff, and how the whole thing just doesn't kind of pop. I, I wish it looked a little nicer. It just looks a little drab. It looks like a, a book without pictures to some degree. Um, and I felt like the objective cards were not really that even. Like if it says collect a thousand pounds, I can do that. I just save my money and collect a thousand pounds. If it says have these rooms, maybe I'll get the rooms. If they show up and someone else doesn't quick buy it before I do, I don't know, I wasn't, a re I wasn't really sold on those. And this game pushes that whole courtship, courtship, courtship thing, but you could ignore the courtships and do okay, I think. Um, but other than that, I do like the idea of the rooms. I like, you know, concentrating on a room. Maybe a room works for you. I have this room and I'm, it, it needs a lady and a gentleman. I have these two. Boom. I put them out, get some stuff. Then I use another room and get some stuff from that. Then I go back to the first room. You can do that, but you want to use maybe more rooms to flip them over from negative points. You want to buy more rooms, but this same room, some rooms like this, let you use seven people. That's great. And you're just like, blah, look at all these rewards, reputation and money and all this. Sure, but now all of a sudden those people are out of your hand. And in this game, taking a passing turn really feels like a waste. You're like, all right, I'll take a passing turn. I'll pick up my cards and stuff. And in many games, you have these sort of passing turns. It's fine. But here, since there's only a 16 turns or 20 turns in the long game, by the way, 16, plenty long enough, in my opinion. Not that I thought the game was overly long, but when I was done with 16, I was like, mm, perfect time, perfect length. Some players said, no, 20 is better. I've not played a 20 length game. I don't want to. Um, but anyhow, uh, but taking a passing turn, that's 1 16th or 1 20th, and you probably will have to take two or three of these turns over the course of the game. Really feels, ah, getting a super great guest who gives you victory point cards, who gives you a lot of reputation. Reputation has this triangulation point scale. Like the higher your reputation, the way more points you get. So you definitely want to have a good reputation. You want to get good guests, those guests who cause you to lose points, you want them out. So there's a nice give and flow. There's not a ton of interaction between players other than fighting over the affections of the Fairchilds, but also the servants. This is another minor thing I didn't like. If you can't get the servants you want because they're not in the servants for hire, you can just basically hire them right out the nose from someone else. You won't lose all your servants. You won't lose your butler if you get an under butler. There's a few people you won't lose, but some you will lose. And sometimes someone will just hire the servant out from underneath you that you need to get, which makes you take another action to get that servant back from them. And it's this little tug of war over the same servant, which can kind of slow you down from actually winning the game. And if I'm taking your servant from you, then Susan might win the game while we battle back and forth over that servant. So I wasn't as keen on that particular thing. But... I'll give this credit. It's a unique, different theming. I think that's pretty neat. Uh, the concept here of using a room, putting in the people and activating them and getting some rewards and benefits and getting more cards. It's like a hand builder game as you pull the cards in your hand. I think that's pretty neat too. And there's a lot of diversity in what rooms and characters you're gonna get. The family bonuses are very minor really. Like one starts a little bit of money and one starts a little reputation, but they kind of give you a little bit of a jump start to move on. And there's even like another family, a little tiny expansion, just get another family. All in all, I think a lot of people are really gonna like this. It does have that Pride and Prejudice uh, era down pat, kind of, you know, hey, the whole courting thing. And while, you know, we can look back a couple hundred years later and see how silly it is, it sure makes for a good game. Dice Tower Judgment approved. <laughs>